Hello again. Okay, what we're going to do this time, I'm going to bore you again with another little demo. This one's going to be a on key. Uh, we have on key and we have key in uh, Extended Basic. And what I want to do is I want to show you something you can do. This is a uh, program I wrote. And it's three different versions of basically the same thing. You have normal input, you have a normal accept at, and then you have RxB is a little bit different. We'll start off with the normal. You're going to print out, is it OK? And then you're going to input it into a dollar sign, and it's going to check to see if it's a yes. So let's try that. Now if we spell it wrong, it just goes back again. No matter how many we put in. We do it right, it ends. So that is the uh, normal XB, normal input. Then we have a normal accept at. Now on this one, we're going to put print the same thing. We're going to accept at, we're going to beep, we're going to validate that it's up alpha. We have a size of three letters, and then we're going to check it the same way as the input. Once again, we put in the wrong letters doesn't matter what, until we put in the right letters and it accepts it. That's how it works. Finally, we have down here, RxB is different. It'll print, is it okay, like we did before. We're going to do the beep because the beep was in these other two. We have to add the beep. And then we have a call key. Now, how this works is, call key is going to look for a Y. And because the if then else is built into RxB, see so the if then else is here in regular extended basic. If the a dollar sign equals yes, then and else 180. Well, RxB's key scans for just a single key at a time to get, and put it in K. So it's looking for a Y. Now it's uppercase because it's using key scan 3. Then it puts it in status. Well, then it goes to the next key because the, it goes to the comma and says, okay, well, I'm going to have to scan for another key. So it looks for the E. If you press the E, then it continues on. Again, uppercase, again the K, and again the status. Then it looks for an S. Again, uppercase, K, and then S. We're using the same variable because it doesn't really matter. We don't care about saving this. It doesn't matter if we save it or not. The, uh, it'll, it'll scan for a Y, then an E, then an S. So let's run that. So no matter what key I push, so if I push the O or P, it'll ignore that key, the Enter or any other key. But if I push the S, then it's already gone to the first one. If I push the E, then it's gone to the second one. And it'll take any key like L or Q or whatever, it doesn't really matter, until I hit the S. So the point is that even a monkey could eventually get it right. Because at least eventually a monkey will hit the Y, then the E, then the S. Now, there are a few applications for this. I, I will admit that there's not a lot of applications, but there are a few. And it has some interesting uses. Let's go into another one I have here called on key. This is a same demo that I did earlier, but I wanted to point out the fact that the on key, something I didn't explain, was the length, one, two, three characters. The go to's correspond, one corresponds to the first one, which is 120. The 2 corresponds to this one, and the 3 corresponds to this. It doesn't matter what these keys are. Their position tells you where in the go-to list they're going to be. So as long as the line's got enough space for all the go-to's and the line numbers, this string could be, you know, Z dollar sign, and it would still work. You know, you could do the same thing by going 90 Z dollar sign equals um, 1, 2, 3. Oops, sorry. And then we could change that 100 to the Z dollar sign. And it still works the same way. But it's counting down that string. So you can, as you can see, that it depends upon how many uh, line numbers you have in the go to. You could add more. We could add like 12 more. It just would never talk to any of them because the string is not long enough. 
You only get into trouble if you have less line numbers than you have in the string. Then it'll crash because it can't, as it goes through, it's looking for the line number in the program and it can't find a line number, so it just crashes the program. So what this is going to do is go to 120, 130, 140, and those are going to print out the key, and then it's going to go back to 100. We could actually use the same line number on this program right here because it's they're just printing to K. I, or I could print out 1, 2, 3. It doesn't really matter. The point is that it's doing the search by counting down the character length in the string. So let's run the program. Now as you can see, it just prints out the key. doesn't matter which one I push. And that's all there is to it. Pretty simple. Now, we also have something new here. I wanted to show you this. This is the program that originally I wrote for a GPL demo called Balloons. Now, what this is is a balloon program where you pop the balloons. Uh, you can see from the size of the program is pretty large. Let's do a size here. It tells you this program is 23172. And that tells you what the size of the program is. And then the stack, it tells you the stack. So let's run the program here, see what it looks like. Hit enter. OK, now we're going to pop the balloons. Now look how fast the uh, cursor is moving. And the reason why it moves that fast is because it's doing an if-then-else to scan for the correct key. And then it's appropriately moving to that key scan to put the correct value in the sprite so it works. So this gives you an idea how the program works and what it's doing. So that's how the program works. Now let's just jump out of this. Now let's load the other one over here, which is RxB balloons. Let's run the program. A little bit faster startup because it's a little bit smaller. By the way, I should have started. I'm sorry, I should have done that. Let's do a size. Okay, this time it's 23207 versus 23172. So we saved a little of the space, not a lot. You know, not quite, um, not quite 100 bytes, but you know, it's, it's sizable. Run the program. Hit enter to start the program. And let's play the game. It moves pretty close to the same speed. There is a slight difference though. It is a little bit faster. And you can feel it in response time when you press the keys. So it's not like something I can demo until you actually try it yourself. Now what do we have here? Let's take a look at the difference between the two programs. We're going to use our TI directory to do this. It's in disk one. This is going to be the regular normal extended basic balloons. Let's put that over here. There's the size of the entire program. Actually, we need to get over here. Let's do the RXB balloons. Quite, quite fit on screen. I have a problem here. So I'll have to size this down a little bit to right there. Now what do we got a difference here between the two programs? Let's do a little bit smaller. Good gosh. All right, here we go. The difference is between the two of them that it is that mostly in the display ads. The display ad here is like this. You see these colons right here? It's using colons and spaces between the display ads because you can't use a string down to the next line. 
This is why I wrote H foot. H foot, on the other hand, is a little bit different. Instead of having the colons, I have a comma, and then I had to add two to this, because H foot works the same way as H character and V character. It uses the first two characters, unlike print or display it, which you have to, it has two characters on the sides to the left and right of the screen that aren't being used, like print. So what I've done is I put a comma in here and I just added two to the number and then just used the same string. But I don't have all this other junk in between. And it operates a little bit faster also. Another change between the two of them is, uh, let's go down to the key. Like here's the key in extended basic at 160. Let's look at the RXB. Now this one is pretty simple. Character 13 is the, the, uh, the uh, enter key. Right here we have an if then else, right here, or if then. Well, see, it's built into RxB by putting this here. There's your if then right there, built in. All right, let's go down to a different spot. Let's go down to this one right here at 210. This is call key, and it does this. Well, at 210 here, we have no call key. I took it out. The reason why is because I added this line here, though I didn't need to. I could have put this inside this. But 230 is where the mother of the muscle is, right here. And on this one, where the muscle is, is the same place. But you can see the problem. See this if then else right here? And then the call key is up here. So we have three separate lines to run the call key where it's going to go. RxB has combined all of this into one line. There's your on key. Z dollar sign is your string. There's four characters, four go to's, one, two, three, four. And it drops down to these lines. Does the same thing as this program. But as the if then else is built right into the, the command, you save a lot of space. Let's go down to a different command. Let's go down to like the last of the program down here at this call key at 360. And let's do the same thing down here. Oh, that's the H put, sorry. I eliminated a line. The reason why is because the call key here has if 89 then 170 and of course you can't add it. You can add else in here and do this if you wanted to and then put the end at the end or put the end where the 360 is. You could still do it in one line it would just come out clear over here. On RxB we have call key yes no key scan 3 for uppercase so if k equals 89 then 170 else just end the program. It's much more compact. And it operates faster. So that's what I wanted to do for key to demonstrate it. And I think we've run out of time. So I'll talk to you guys next time I do the next uh, demo. See you later.